So now that we've established a working idea of what it means to conserve populations, we're going to broaden and sort of change the scope in terms of what we're talking about when we say conservation by looking at the next type of conservation in this study of biology that we'll entitle landscape plus regional conservation. And this is going to be the first flowchart of this type of conservation, so we'll also include a Roman numeral 1. So to begin, we're going to first look at the landscape side of this story, and we have to first, of course, define what a landscape is. So let's see. When we have a landscape, we're going to consider any landscape the following. It's an area containing several different, so we'll say area containing several different ecosystems linked by, so several different ecosystems, that's the key here, linked by exchange of energy, matter, or organisms. So linked by exchange, that's the key here, of energy, matter, or slash, let's say, and, or, doesn't matter, uh, organisms. So that's a pretty broad definition, uh, but I think the key here is that we're looking at a link of uh, ecosystems and the exchange between them. So when we understand landscape in the context of ecology, we're going to actually look at it as the following. So we'll call landscape ecology this over here, and we're going to put a different definition here based off of what we just said, what a landscape is, this idea of linked ecosystems. So when we include the term ecology, we are now going to be referring to as landscape ecology as the idea of a spatial arrangement. So this is definitely in space. It's physical that what we're studying right now. It's a spatial arrangement of habitat types. Let me rewrite that of habitat types. But what we're specifically saying is that the spatial arrangement of habitat types affects the distribution. That's what's key in the ecological standpoint. Affects the distribution and the abundance of organisms plus abundance of organisms and ecosystem processes. So we'll write ecosystem processes. Those biogeochemical cycles, imagine. So the distribution and abundance of organisms and ecosystem processes is directly affected by the spatial arrangement of the habitat in which they occur. And of course, if we have a landscape ecological mindset, we are looking at ecosystems linked by this exchange of energy and matter. I think the best way to understand both landscape and landscape ecology is to look at a physical representation of this. And the physical representation of this will be manifested in something known as edges. Edges are a great way to understand both landscape and landscape ecology because they essentially are both of those things. We can define edges, firstly, as just boundaries between ecosystems, but it's a lot more than that, as we'll see. So boundaries between ecosystems, um, let's imagine like uh, a lake edge and the forest that's about to, that's right next to it. So the very edge of it is, that's why it's called an edge, um, of that lake and the beginning of the, it's the end of the lake, let's say, and the beginning of the forest or the beginning of the forest and the end of the lake, whatever you want to call it. That's that boundary between ecosystems, two very distinct um, ecosystems in which we're going to say that the physical conditions differ pretty greatly. We have an aquatic environment and ecosystem versus a terrestrial in that lake and land scenario. So we'll say that the physical conditions definitely at this edge scenario differ uh, pretty greatly. So we'll say that they differ. So now we've established what an edge is. Within an edge, what we can observe is something called fragmentation. And this is not new to us, but now we're looking at fragmentation in the context of a landscape. 
in the context of an area, in the context of a spatial arrangement more specifically. Now, we understood that a fragmentation, again to reiterate, is when a habitat is broken into smaller fragments. That's the name. Broken into smaller frags, just like we said. And that was from our early understanding when we looked at a previous conservation flowchart. But what we understand with fragmentation is that you also get more of these edges. When you have fragmentation, when you have habitats broken down into smaller and smaller components, you get more edges. The best way to imagine this manifesting itself and actually showing itself up in an ecosystem is to think of a rectangle. And if you have a rectangle here, like I'm drawing here, um, you're going to have these a bunch of these edges in this fragmentation that's going to happen. And all of these edges that I'm drawing, these rectangles within rectangles, let's say, each point at which we have an edge, we have two ecosystems interacting with each other, two ecosystems, two ecosystems, all of which are exchanging energy, matter, and organisms in a very sort of boundary, uh, boundary um, phenomenon that we observe here. So when we have this type of fragmentation, we are essentially looking at edges over and over and over again, where the physical conditions of this edge that I'm coloring over here certainly differ than the physical conditions over here simply because of the, of the physical landscape that presents itself over here, the spatial arrangement that presents itself, the distribution and abundance of organisms that presents itself on those two separate areas. They are definitely different because of this idea of edges. So now what we're going to understand is that in some scenarios, some organisms actually thrive in this edge environment. Some organisms, will say, thrive in edges. And this is good. This is good for them. They thrive in these edges because they actually are able to use resources quite effectively from um, both ecosystems that are, you, you know, an edge has to involve two different ecosystems like the lake and the land scenario that we did here. I'll just write that down as an example. Um, lake plus land. If you have the edge of a lake and the edge of land, you have created a nice edge with the fragmentation. There are resources on both sides of that lake and land scenario that some organisms can use. Um, a good example of this um, that we can understand this even further by is the is the uh, ruffled grouse. So we'll call this the ruffled grouse. What does the ruffled grouse have to do with anything here? The ruffled grouse is going to be really, really unique because it actually will use the forest that lake and land scenario is going to show up here. It's going to use a, a forest, a densely packed forest, imagine, for winter food. <clears throat> so it's using uh, a, a different, different set of resources from a different area, right? But let's imagine that there's an open area that this forest is right next to. A forest is densely packed with trees. If you put it next to an area that's wide open and expansive, you are looking at an edge. You are looking at a forest, densely packed, and you're looking at a wide open area. This organism, the ruffled grouse, actually takes the open area from the open area and it gets its summer food from here. Open area for summer food. What are we doing here? We're utilizing landscape ecology. The spatial arrangement of habitat types affects the distribution and abundance of organism and ecosystem processes. These are resources that are abundant in two different scenarios, two different ecosystems that this organism that lives on the edge, that enjoys the edge environment, is able to capitalize on. But the problem that we have here that's most important to the idea of landscape conservation is the fact that some but not all organisms thrive in edges. What we have to understand is that as the habitat, H-A-B for habitat, becomes more fragmented, so we'll write this down as becomes more fragmented plus edges increase, we're going to get a pretty difficult scenario for some other organisms. The biodiversity, usually what's going to happen, it'll decrease. So we'll write that down as biodiversity decreases. So that is not good for us if we're studying conservation biology, of course. And if the biodiversity decreases, this is directly in result to the fact 
that all animals who can't live on the edge decrease. Because what are we doing? We're increasing edges. We're increasing fragmentation. And all animals who can't, not somebody like the ruffled grouse, all animals who can't live in edges, because this is not a natural scenario, these edges, okay, for the most part, if it's human, if it's a result of human activity, uh, most, all these animals who can't live in edges, they, these guys will certainly decrease. Decrease in number, decrease in effective population size. And then finally, last thing, only those who are the edge adapted, as we would expect based off of natural selection, of course, only edge adapted species will thrive, like somebody like the ruffled grouse. But again, if you lose so much of this biodiversity, if you lose so many of these animals, we know for a fact from our prior ecological studies that this is not good as a whole for the entire ecological landscape. And thus, we have established the idea of edges, landscape, and landscape ecology, and we'll continue this discussion of landscape and regional conservation in the next video.